Here's some video footage and some photographs that I took in Steinbeck country in March of 210 on my research tour. Steinbeck grew up in Salinas, which is about 15 miles from the ocean and is uh, not a very exciting place except for the Steinbeck Center. About 30,000 people a year go to the National Steinbeck Center and it's uh, quite uh, visitor friendly. It's got a lot of nice displays and uh, exhibits film clips. It's a nice place to go if you care about Steinbeck, and it's one of the few reasons to go to Salinas. Steinbeck and Charlie left Long Island on September 23, 1960. They circumnavigated the country, logging about 10,000 miles in a Spartan camper shell pickup truck combo that uh, Steinbeck had named Rosinante after the horse in Don Quixote. Steinbeck's grave is pretty well taken care of these days, but when he was a kid, he wanted to be buried on Fremont Peak. It's the highest point in Steinbeck country. He played there as a kid, and it's uh, hard to get to. You have to take an 11 mile drive up the mountainside over ridges and canyons but it's a, a tremendous view and it's well worth it. Getting to the very top of the peak is not very easy. There are some small steps carved out of the marble boulders, otherwise you need to be a mountain goat. But the payoff is pretty big. You have a beautiful view of the Salinas Valley all the way out to Monterey Bay and the rounded hills that Steinbeck often wrote about. My car is there. This is kind of high up here. In fact, it's ridiculously high and a little, a little scary up here. I'm on Fremont Peak, Peak overlooking Steinbeck country. That glare behind me is the sun bouncing off Monterey Bay. I hope I don't kill myself trying to show this. Already dropped the camera and miraculously it seems to be still working. I'm putting, I'm swinging around, I'm now looking into the sun as you can see. San Francisco was probably Steinbeck's favorite city. He and his wife Elaine stayed there during their travels with Charlie Tripp. They stayed at the St. Francis Hotel in downtown, one of the nicest hotels in the city. Charlie, meanwhile, was booked into a kennel. During his stay in San Francisco, Steinbeck and his wife Elaine spent several days drinking and dining with their pals at Enrico's. Enrico's was right on the street in North Beach uh, at the corner of Columbus and Broadway, where all the action was in San Francisco in 1960. The Hungry Eye was there. That's where Mort Saul played, and uh, where Smothers Brothers played. Down the street, Johnny Mathis got his start in a club. And around the corner was the City, City Lights Bookstore, which is uh, Lawrence Berlin Getty's headquarters of the Beat Generation. I spoke with Berlin Getty's assistant. He said that Steinbeck never came to the City Lights Bookstore to meet with Ferl and Getty in the fall of 1960. Across the street is the Beat Museum. It's pretty cool. This has been a Steigerwald Media Dynasty Incorporated Limited Production.